The Poco F4 GT on paper and at first glance really looks like a great and worthy smartphone to have, especially if you're a gamer. Or is it? Hmm. Hey guys, James C, your tech buddy, and this is Tech Amino. Well, I have used this phone as my daily driver for over a week now, and I will share with you the reasons to get this now and to those gut tumbled times, also known as hurdles, that I had on this flagship killer device. And let's see if it's worth recommending this phone to you. Alright, let's start with the review with one of the things that is an easy recommendation to get this phone immediately and that is the display and screen. The 6.67 inch AMOLED with 120Hz refresh rate that's very smooth, crisp, and stunning with all of the inky blacks and luscious colors you need in your life. Plus that 480Hz touch tapping rate makes my 7 day experience the perfect trifecta for more immersive and responsive screen and software animations on my testing like that. Even though the display only caps at 1080p, there's a valuable refresh rate feature available here. But it only go down to 60Hz and not as low as 1Hz because it's only exclusive for LTPO AMOLED panels. Finally, a typical thing now for flagship killers is to have the latest Gorilla Glass Victus on the front for a much more protective screen experience, which is a plus here on the POCO F4 GT. The next thing I can consider to get this POCO F4 GT is its build quality. From the aluminum frame to the matte finished Gorilla Glass Victus back, and to the subtle yet gamery angles and metal accents of the back panel of this stealth black collar. You know, this aesthetic is like when you wear a good formal black suit, you can wear it anywhere you go with either a casual shirt and it still suits well. If black is boring to you, you can get it in night silver or cyber yellow for a more loud color palette. Let's talk about the buttons of the phone including the pop-up shoulder triggers here. This is really a gamer's heaven sent feature for them. With a flick of the switch here, you can activate the tactile triggers that will be helpful in every game you can think of. From the basic racing games like Asphalt 9 to the easy access of the super skill on Mobile Legends up to the aim and shoot to kill players on PUBG, it is super useful both in-game and out. My slight nitpick though is that sometimes I can accidentally press the shoulder buttons when on gameplay, which is a bit of an issue, especially to those with small hands. While the fingerprint scanner is uh, fast and responsive to unlock, the position is quite low to my taste even though there are some triggers eating up on the space out of the sides. I sometimes make an accidental screenshot of it uh, the long side with volume buttons on the left side. Uh, they should put it a bit high, just avoid it a little bit. Lastly, before I forget, let's give a shout out to the clever lightning bolt on the camera flash and on the RGB light strips for the additional flair and style to the phone. But this? Um, what the hell is this? Never mind. The next thing why I can suggest this phone with no questions asked is its charging speed. I can charge this phone from 1% to full in less than an hour, though it's not Poco's claim at 17 minutes. So if I told you before that I can finish washing the dishes, dry it up, then put it up on the dish rack, and the phone is not yet fully charged, well, that's the thing in the past on the Poco F4 GT. Oh, by the way, if you want to watch the charging test on this phone, it's now up on my second channel. Links will be in the card or in the description box below. And finally, the most obvious part that you will get on this phone that I love so much was of course the performance. This is actually, at the time of this recording, the most affordable smartphone to have a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip on the market right now. App load faster, there's no lagginess or sluggishness, the animation is fluid, and the graphic intensive games like Genshin Impact or Call of Duty Mobile with either Ultra HD or the maximum resolution you can think of works like a charm and is a very enjoyable to play with alongside the gorgeous and super smooth screen. Sites. 
So, if you will ask me if it warms up over time, well, the answer is yes. If you will push the processor to its maximum power, which is typical if you will use this in heavy gaming. So, I really suggest buying an active cooler here that you will put on the back of your phone if you want to play games but you want to avoid screen burn-in on your display. Now, I already gave you the things you can get on this Poco F4 GT as your next phone. Let's switch gears now. To the things that I got tumbled or had hurdles with this phone in my 7 plus days of using the Poco F4 GT and let's see if it could be a deal breaker for you. But before we go to that part, if you enjoy watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you get you notified when a brand new video will come out. And follow us on our social media accounts like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on TikTok at TechMNO for more content and big giveaways that we have right now that you can check out in the card right here. Let's start with the first con that I can see if you will get the base configuration of the Poco F4 GT. And that's the storage. If you want to play big titles on your phone like Genshin Impact that can go as big as 34 plus gigs but your budget is tight, then think twice on the things you'll put on that 128 gig storage because it can fill up quickly if you will put more heavy titles on your phone. Yes, I have the max configuration here but if you want it, then you need to splurge more to get it. Which leads me to the next case in point of the segment. The Poco F4 GT doesn't have any micro SD card slot, which is for me in this upper mid range flagship killer category, expandable storage is obsolete or rare to find. So I really wish that they should put it as 256 gigs to all variants, or maybe the max 12 gig RAM here should have a 512 gigs of storage. But oh well, here we are. Another hurdle that I experienced on using this phone is not having a headphone jack. Thanks, Apple. Thanks. As a user that prefers wired headphones than wireless, this is a big bummer to me. Even though Poco provides a dongle on the box, you need to remember always where you put it. If you forgot it, you'll buy another one, and another one, and another one. You get it by now. While we are still on the topic of audio, this thing for me in my whole week of testing has a love and hate relationship to it. And that is the speakers. Yes, a stereo speaker setup that's been tuned by JBL with Dolby Atmos support, but the audio output is a mixed bag for me. There was a time that the song I played on Spotify and Apple Music was loud enough to hear, but there were some instances of a different song that is distorted in full volume, and there are times that even though it's in full volume, the audio is not loud enough. I tried to check the settings if there's something's wrong with it, then try to turn off Dolby Atmos mode, but the issue is still there. I don't know if this is a software issue or something, but overall, it's a good stereo speaker on this phone. Alright, it's time to talk about the cameras of the Poco F4 GT with its 64 megapixel main camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 20 megapixel selfie camera. Oh yeah, and a pesky macro camera. Daylight shots on the main camera is super good with fast autofocus feature thanks to the Sony IMX686 lens that's been used in this phone. There's a 2 times zooming option here but it's a crop version of the main camera and the output is only usable at best compared to 1x. The 8 megapixel camera is good but nothing special because there's still some graininess to it and colors are a bit washed out. While the selfie camera is good too, though when it comes to its portrait mode, they can't cut out the ends of my hair properly to the background that leads to including that thing and blurring the background as shown here. In terms of low light and super dark shots taken by the Poco F4 GT, I will just summarize them in one sentence. But all of the lenses struggle in super low light photos, especially with the ultra wide because of the muddiness of the dark environment. Main camera is again and usable but still suffers from that muddiness. Alright, so this is the front facing video test for the Poco X4 GT. Right now it's a 1080p at 60 frames per second. So I'm just trying to walk here doing some stills here so what are your thoughts about the video quality and also the audio quality of this video let me know in the comment section down below oh you're asking about me in the macro camera results uh, don't mind it it's trash I won't give time to that the next thing that I'm a bit bummed out on the Poco F4 GT is the battery life 
Yes, we can have a super fast charging speed here, but in contrast, the battery life is also a bit faster drain. If you're using this in casual to medium usage in Wi-Fi, you can get at least 5 to 6 hours of battery. But if you're gaming in Wi-Fi, it can go from 3 to 4 hours. When you use this with data, which by the way, the 5G connection is so fast here, it will significantly drop to more or less than 3 hours on average. In my 7 plus days of experience here, I sometimes need to charge this phone at least twice a day, which is quite sad to do because it can degrade the battery faster than its expected life cycle. So if you really want to game on the go, then you always need to bring the charger every time in exchange for bringing too much bulk in your bag or your purse because like I said in my unboxing video, the charger is much heavier than the phone itself. And finally, this thing is already a no-brainer for me and that is the software of the Poco F4 GT. The phone runs in MIUI 13 on top of Android 12 with Poco Launcher being the default launcher. While I gave props to Poco for putting the app bloatware to a minimum here, it cannot still hide the fact that the main user interface is still made by Xiaomi that still doesn't care how much that heaviness of the user experience in the first place like the audio issue that I mentioned a while ago. Maybe. While the software update roadmap is still unknown if this phone will receive monthly or every three months, which by the way, that version that I have here in this version is version 13.0.5 with April 2022 security patch. Yes, April. And at the time of this recording, it's already July. Yeah. Hoko should provide their customers at least three or four Android upgrades and five years of monthly security patches. But from what I can see right now, they won't provide that thing to us. Yeah. So now that I gave you the things I experienced on the Poco F4 GT, the question now is, should I recommend this to you? Hmm. Well, the answer is yes. Yes, if you want a phone that is powerful, but it won't burn your wallet. At the current price of the Poco F4 GT, at the time of this recording, it's a really and a very competitive smartphone that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of the best gaming smartphones like ROG, Blackmagic, heck, even the sister company, Blackshark. Yes, if you are a really a gamer. For real, real. The ones who have a lot of additional triggers are the phone cooler in your arsenal and gaming on your phone is life. Of course, this is a no-brainer pick. And finally, yes, if you want a super fast charging on your phone. This is either for gamers or heavy users that really don't want to leave the online world even just for an hour. Hey, hey, get a break sometimes, okay? It's better to rest your eyes for a bit. You're welcome. Now, if you want or care also on long-lasting battery life, great camera performance, especially in low light, and want to have a headphone jack or even an expandable storage, then this is the time that I will say the five words of disappointment. You should look somewhere else. This doesn't meet the needs you want that I didn't mention earlier up there. So maybe the likes of Realme GT Neo 2, GT2, Black Shell 5, or even the Motorola Edge 30 Pro can fill in the other things you need. With that said, with a combination of a smooth and gorgeous 120Hz AMOLED screen, a premium materials, top-of-the-line processor, big RAM capacity, and a mind-boggling charging speed, and of course, a unique trigger button that your gaming heart wants and needs in your life, then no look further with the apex of power that the Poco F4 GT has in store for you as your next daily driver phone. Will you get the Poco F4 GT or you have another phone in your mind right now? Let me know your answers in the comment section down below. And for more reviews like this, check out the playlist right here. Or if you want to watch my unboxing video of the Poco F4 GT, click right here. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and our second channel. Again, I'm your tech buddy James and I will catch you guys on the next one.